I've been going through the scripture sheets. Everybody got their uh, scripture sheets? Everybody's got the booklets, right? Yes, sir. You got the, uh, the warrior's heart mm-hmm. and you got the blue sheet. Okay. <clears throat> I've been doing this for years and, uh, and I've quoted that scripture and read it many times and said, amen, yes. But you see, when it's made alive to you, it generates energy. It ge- energates power. It energates Energates. That's a new word. And energates. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> energizes uh, our inner man. Now, look at that scripture. You, you see it in two parts. I write to you, fathers. Why? Why are you writing to the fathers, John? Because you have come to know. So there must have been a period of time when they really didn't know. But now they have come to know. Now, some of us might not know yet, but I believe God is bringing us to that point that we have come to know what? Recognize, (coughs) be conscious of. Everybody say, be conscious of. What you are conscious of either will edify you or pull you down. If you're conscious of somebody that have said bad things about you. Now, we've all know this by our experience of life. We've been around a long time. Some of us have been around longer than others, but, <clears throat> but most of us have been around a long time. You know what you think on, it's either going, you're going to be built up by it or you're going to be disturbed by it. Is that not true? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. That's why Jesus said, don't worry about anything. Yeah, but, you know, the politicians up there, I mean, you know, we don't have anybody to vote for. Well, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I know I'm talking to people. Because <laughs> this is, I quote the scriptures of myself. Have you learned to do that yet? Bob, yes. That's me, oh. Don't worry about anything. But what should I do, Lord? Pray about everything. And I'll tell you what, it's going to happen. Pray about everything. And the peace of God, Bob, will keep your heart and mind at rest as you trust in the Lord. Okay, Lord, I'll do that. But I have a hard time sometimes. I know, I know, Bob. But you see, that's why I send the Holy Spirit. He's your helper. He's your counselor. He is your strengthener. You have to be conscious of him. That he'll do what he says he will do. See, we bring this thing right down where we live. Either we're blowing a lot of air around here or we are speaking truth. And I think we're speaking truth because I've experienced all this. And I know many of you have too. But look at that. Conscious of and understand him. Jesus. Understand Jesus. Who has existed from the beginning. Jesus Christ was with God in the beginning. He, in fact, he is God. Everything was created by Jesus Christ. God created all things through his son, Jesus Christ. Colossians tells us that. Well, everything has been created for his pleasure. Everybody say, I've been created for my husband's pleasure. I've been created for my wife's pleasure. I've been created for what? I lost contact. What? His pleasure. See, see, Gosh, this thing's going a different way than I thought it was. <laughs> let it roll, okay? I believe we'll let it roll. When you know that you've been created for his pleasure, when you understand and comprehend and recognize that, that, that Jesus existed from the very beginning and he is the one that created us for his pleasure And we are not our own now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I would self-destruct. But we belong to him. See, I belong to him. I belong to him. Okay. We belong to him. Now look at that. Then he says, To you young men, because you are strong and vigorous. 
Now, why are these young men strong and vigorous? See, this is how you break the scriptures down. You ask questions and, and you bring it in, into terminology that you can understand in your own level of life. I have to ask the question, why are these young people, these young men, why are they strong and vigorous? Somebody tell me. Now, Oh, yeah. Oh, so the word must be important. Uh huh. Hey, we got our first clue. Somebody says, I want to, my brother Bob, if I could just be strong in, in God. I wish I could. Listen, calm down. Let me tell you how. I want you to check this verse out. All right, there it is. You want to be strong, vigorous, and the word of God is always abiding in you. So if the word of God is always abiding in us, what is the result of that? Strong and vigorous. See, that's how you have to break the word of God down. Okay? Now, notice, abiding on the pages of the Bible. <coughs> hmm? Abiding on the wall. Abiding on the pages. Abiding where? Oh. You mean we got to get it off the pages and get it into us. And if we do, we are going to be strong and vigorous and encouraged. And we could add a lot to that. Not that we're adding to the word of God, but it's all in the scriptures all there. Now notice this. That ain't the end of it. Abiding in you, in your heart. And you have been victorious over the wicked one. How can we be victorious over the wicked one? Somebody tell me. By letting the word of God abide in us. Answer, that's it. Okay, so mm, I need to spend more time in the word. Yeah, but you know, I got to do the dishes. Yeah, I know, I know. I tell you, Susan's being wise. She buys these plates you just throw away. I like, I like them. <laughs> How many buys the plates you just throw away now? Huh? Yeah, buy the plates you just throw away. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's smart. Smart. Now, that, that, that seems simple. And it is simple. God takes the simple things to confound the wise. All right, now, let's bring this down. You've just learned something. I'm going to ask questions. If you want to be vigorous and strong, what must you do? What can you do to be strong and vigorous? Huh? Let the word abide I hear the word out there? Yes. Okay, you, you put the word, you, you put the word, where do you put the word? On the wall? No. Huh? Uh, uh, where? Heart. Uh, in our hearts. Woo, hallelujah. Putting the word in our hearts. All right. If we want to overcome the wicked one, what we must, what should we have to do? What do we have to do? Look at the scriptures up there. Good to see you. Just check the scriptures up there. We're studying that. So if we want to overcome and be victorious over the wicked one, what must we to do? Going back to the word. Hmm, I remember something Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but Lord, them donuts are good. Yeah, I know I like donuts too. But you got to realize you cannot live just on donuts. Gee whiz. You got to have some candy and something. No. no what do we, something. What, is, what does he say? That say? Cannot live by bread, but by, by what? Abiding in the word. By every what? Word of God. Ooh. <clears throat> now, let's ask ourselves a question. Are we learning that, though, aren't we? We are we learning. You, you better learn it. Because we're in the last days, and you're not going to be able to stand if you don't learn, you know, to really let the Word of God bod in you. All right, very important. All right, the next scripture I want to come to is 2, Corinth, 2 Timothy 2.15. Second, uh, and then we'll break that down the next word up. Now, remember, we, we've been saying that we've got to find out what God does, what his part is, and what our part is. All right, two part. Our part, God part.
God, you must study and be eager and do the other. No, no, no. Study. Is he talking to God? Who's he talking to? He's talking to us. You mean we got to study? Boy, when I was in school, that's the last thing I wanted to do. I wanted to go out and play. And, you know, I had to break that habit because sometimes it's like that now. I'd rather go out and play than study. But Paul is saying under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, study and be eager to do your utmost to present yourself to God, approved, tested by trial, a workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. All right, so we have to get into the word of God. Now, here's what you've got to understand. As far as I know, everybody in here are Christians. So I wouldn't talk to you about being saved. I wouldn't talk to you about uh, repenting and let, and, and let Christ come into your heart because that's already your experience. So I have to talk to Christians, children of God, different than I would lost people. I mean, everybody agree to that yeah. and understand that. Yeah. All right. So when we study the word of God, we've got to understand, is God talking to me as a sinner or is he talking to me as a saint? How many saints do we have in here? All right. Everybody knows you're a saint. So when you read the word of God, you read the part now that God is saying to the saints, us, we saints, uh, we're children of God. Now, we've been born again. <clears throat> we didn't find the Lord. The Lord found us. The Lord came and, 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 and seeked us out and, and found us and, and showed us that we were lost and we repented and accepted Christ and became a child of God. We have eternal life right now. If we die, we go to heaven just like that. All that's taken care of. You ain't going to get no more saved than you are right now. See, I'm saved. I'm saved. Can't get no more saved. Uh, if, if you do, let me know about it. <laughs> but you can't. So we're not trying to get saved. Here's what we're doing. What, what is our part? When you read the scriptures, rightly dividing the word of truth, my part is to study, be eager to do the uttermost to present myself to God approved. As a workman, I want, now I'm a workman, and I want to present myself to God approved. And how do you get approved? By studying. Everybody say studying. studying. Okay. Take the scriptures, that's why we have the scripture sheets. When you read the scripture sheets, certain things will come alive to you. You're studying. I am strong and the word of God abides in me. And I have overcome the evil one. Well, we just had that, 1 John uh, 2, 14. All of a sudden, as you read, my weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Well, you know, you read that, it, it, you filter it through your intellect. I'm strong and all. But then one day you'll pick the same, you might have read it a thousand times. And you'll pick it up again. My, my weapons... Are mighty through God to the pulling down of Satan's strongholds. It becomes alive to you, and in that, when it becomes alive to you, you become bold. The righteous are as bold as a lion. You quit taking that, taking that stuff off of the evil one, him fil filtering that garbage into your mind each day, and you're sucking it in like gravy, like ice cream and cake. No, wait a minute. My weapons are mighty to do what? Notice, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, how do you pull down a stronghold? A stronghold is something that, that, that like a lie that you believe in your mind, and it becomes a stronghold, and it'll either paralyze you or just cause you to be a coward. Just like fear. Now, there's times we might experience certain degrees of fear, some types of fear is natural, but you shouldn't have, be, you shouldn't have fear all in your life 24-7. You should feel the peace of God 
the presence of God, conscious of God's love. God loves me. <laughs> God loves me. All of a sudden, it'll break in on you like that, and you'll go almost. You don't care if anybody's even looking. You might even say hallelujah. It just filters into the very fiber of your being. God loves me. All my life, that's what I've been seeking. And I finally find that God loves me. Because God's love is perfect. Perfect love casts out all fear of being rejected, not love, not good enough. Those things just flake away and you realize God loves you because he's God and God is love. You don't have to jump through a hundred loops. Certain things when you're establishing those things, now you do things not to try to make God love you more because he can't love you no more than he loves you now. But I'll say this, while we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. How much more will he do now that we are his children? So God loves us. Now, that love, Paul said that love motivates me, moves me to please God. God. My greatest desire is to please God. My greatest desire is to please my wife, Susan. Honey, can we do so and so? I don't really want to do it. I'd rather cut grass or study the word. But could, honey, does it please you? Yeah, I'd really like to do it. But then we're going to do it. Hello, are you out there? Yes, sir. Some of you just fainted, didn't you? <laughs> see, see, there comes a point when you, when, you, when, you, when you please God, you please yourself. You're now pleased. When you please your mate, you're now pleased. Uh, can I break through in this thing tonight? Yes, can, can we understand how that works? Because yes, you get what you sow. So I love, now I'm a practical man, a little on the conservative side, pinch the nickels when I can, you know, but I'm a very generous man too. Susan said, Tony, do you think we maybe we could do this? I say, well, what do you think? Well, I, I, I said, well, let's, let's talk about it and let me uh, get it in pr proper perspective here now. You want to give this person uh, $300. I, I really feel like the Lord is saying that that's what I need to do. But I don't feel like that. <laughs> so what would I do? I tear up my, my marriage. I throw chairs around. I, you always want to get rid of my, my money. I work hard for that money. I... You ever, ever seen anybody like that? Uh, we might not be that extreme, but inside you are turning over loops, jumping over tables, throwing rocks at everybody inside. You know, it, it, it's amazing. Now, I'm just sharing a little bit about my heart because I used to be that way. <laughs> yeah, that's me. That's right. But see, when God, see, it is God working in Bob Tilton, making me willing to do his, sorry, okay. do his good pleasure. I, I want to say that again. It is God, God that spoke, created the earth. Everything is created by him. It's working in my life, making me willing to do his good pleasure. Can we grasp that? Because we aren't willing to give $300 to nobody. But when God does the work, honey, if you really feel like that's what the Lord is saying, if you really feel like we can afford to do that, 
I'm free inside. See, you know when you're free. See, when you're free, you, you talk different, you, you act different, you, you respond differently. You, you, you're free. See, Christ said, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Cherish that liberty. But you see, that old self is selfish, naughty, unforgiving. And God tells us that in his word, not to put us down, but we might recognize that manifestation is not from God, but it is of the flesh or the enemy. And now you could say, hey, my Lord took care of that at Calvary. I like that song tonight, the sin was nailed to the cross. Yeah, it was nailed to the cross. But I got news for you. That old part of us that likes to sin... When were you crucified, son? Tell me. When was you crucified? Show me. I'm up here. Get on the cross. Yeah, yeah just get on the cross. <coughs> And stay on the cross. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, get on the cross. Don't, don't he look good on the cross? <laughs> Anybody else want to get up there and say how good you look on the cross? All right, listen. Paul is described. You, you, you comfortable? You, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You, doing? <laughs> you know, when you preach, you can call on me. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen. Just hang out, buddy. Yeah, yeah. He looks good on the cross, don't he? <laughs> but if you bite and devour one another in participant strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are not consumed by one another. Now, we read that. And we say, wow, but if you bite and devour one another in partism, strife, be careful that you and your whole fellowship are, but see, you can bring that down to our marriage and our marriage life or, or, or anything. There's one thing that we have to remember. We have to love one another. You better. You ain't learned that yet. Yeah, but you don't know what they said. I don't care what they said. You love them. Because how can you say you love God who you don't see when you have a brother or sister you see? We are commanded to love one another. From Genesis to Revelation, it's about love. It's about relationships, horizontally and vertically. Are you listening? So quit that nonsense. That's what it is. Let it go to the cross. So... Everything that might manifest in him, it took care of the cross. It was nailed to the cross. But he was nailed to the cross. He died with Christ, and we died with Christ. And now listen to this. But I say, walk and live happily in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the craving and desires of the flesh of the human nature without God. You may be seated. So... If, any, if anything inside of him or us that would rise up, that want to gossip or say something bad about somebody, what do we do? We say, God, thank you. I mean, you could get happy. You could get happy in this. Thank you, Lord. That died. When I, it was nailed to the cross, and I, that old man died with Christ. And so, therefore, I reckon myself to be dead indeed unto sin, but I'm alive, alive, alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. He did it for me. He did it for me. And I reckon upon it. I count it already done. It may be manifested in myself. I'd like to take you by your throat. I'd like to strangle you. I'd like to throw you on the floor and just jump up and down. Come 
Come on now, I'm telling the truth. Yes, <laughs> but, oh, I remember. I'm dead indeed under that. Yes, now you're under the control of the Holy Spirit. You realize that God already took care of that. Yes, yeah, but it's manifesting. Doesn't matter. You put it off. Put off yes. the old man and put on the new man, which is created after righteousness and holiness. See, that's our part. Okay? Now, these things, I talk to young men, old men, middle men, round men, tall men, short men, Zacchaeus, real short. That flesh of yours is going to manifest. Now, I'm going to get down to the goodies here. Has anybody ever had any uh, lust in them from the opposite sex? Raise your hands. All right, if you've never had any, raise your hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. <laughs> See, I know human nature. Oh my God, I thought I was sanctified. Oh God, man, this, this lust. Oh, oh, oh. Oh my God. No. You let the Word of God abide in you. Remember, it's God working in you. Remember, that was taken care of Calvary. Now, I'm saying this to keep the devil off your back. Because if you don't understand that your flesh at any time could rise up and, and, and create a riot. Yes. Hello? Yes, sir. Did you see what. Mrs. Keys was doing down there the other day. It looked like she was throwing rocks at her neighbor. Now, she might feel like that sometimes, but you know what? She knows how to handle that. She knows that Jesus already took care of that at Calvary. Amen. And, 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 I, I, and I'm not going to obey that stinking flesh no more. Because it will get you into trouble. Talk to the people in jail. So you learn the word of God, you learn to let it abide in you, and you obey that word, even though ooh, you have that deep feeling, oh, I just, just one time, Lord, you know, one time, then I'll repent. Just one, yeah, just one time, that's all you have to do it. Pull the trigger one time. All these people are killing and shooting one another. They don't know how to handle the flesh. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They have not learned to be conscious of the Holy Spirit. They have not learned to be conscious that that old man was crucified on the cross 2,000 years. I'm free today. I'm free from Bob Tilton. I'm free. I said, I'm free from Bob Tilton. Come on, let me hear somebody say something back there. Come on. I'm free from who? Let me hear it. What'd you say? Huh? I didn't hear you, son. I'm free from Willie. Oh, man. Did you hear what he said? He's free from Willie. How about... Uh, huh? Free from Mike. Huh? Free from huh? Free from uh, let's hear you. Huh? Free. Free. Uh, how about back there? Huh? Yeah. See, you got to get that nailed down. You're free from that. Listen, enjoy the freedom of the Lord. Enjoy what God did for you at Calvary. Just praise Him. I don't care what manifests in this flesh. I don't have to obey it. I am in control because the Holy Spirit gives me that control. And the, Paul said it this way. It is the love of God that controls me. Amen. So you've you got to get rough in this situation. You can't hanky panky dinky danky dooky tanky with this stuff. You've got to <laughs> nail it down and see what the Lord has done for me. What the Lord has done for you. And uh, proclaim it and speak. Put... Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 13 up there. It's good, good, isn't it? Yes, Some of you are going to need prayer after this. I know that. <laughs> Yet we have the same spirit of faith. Faith is the spirit. How about shield of faith? Faith is is a shield. We take the shield of faith. We take faith, which is a shield, and quench all the fiery darts of the anyone. 
And we do that by speaking. And as we speak that word of faith, it becomes a shield and knocks those fiery darts down from the enemy. Notice what it says. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had. Now he, we know, is David. I done told you that. And you'll see that in Psalms 110, I think it's verse 6. As he had, that is King David had, who wrote, I have believed, and therefore have I spoken. We too believe, and therefore we speak. So speak what you believe. What do you believe? What do you believe? Here's what I believe. That's why we wrote this down. Here's what I believe. I believe that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I believe that I'm complete in Christ and I have no sense of inferiority before God. I believe that my flesh was crucified with Christ 2,000 years ago. And if it manifests, I reckon that it is done. Reckoning means count it already done. Remember, God counts those things that be not as they are. Oh, remember that. So you've got to learn to count like your flesh kicks up sometimes. Oh, it's dead. It's just kicking up. If you had a little boy, which that was, you know, you ever seen kids sometimes they get on the floor and holler and hoot and all that kind of stuff? You're not going to cater to that. Just let them kick it out until finally they'll kick it out. But after a while you say, son, you don't have to do that to get my attention. Mama loves you. Daddy loves you. Now, we just ain't going to do that no more. Because next time you do that, I guess what we'll have to do. Spank you. Okay? <laughs> and, if you, hey, and if you say it, he needs to believe yeah. you mean it. And you may have to spank him about two times, but after that, He'll be like David. I went astray before I was afflicted. Mama spanked me. But since he, she spanked me, I don't act up like that anymore. Come on, church. Yeah, this is good, isn't it? What do you believe? I believe I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm a new creation being. I believe, therefore, there is now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. I believe that Christ Jesus, my Lord, is my wisdom. He is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is my redemption. Yes. I believe the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Put that on the board for me. Romans 8, 2. I want to show you something here. <coughs> Excuse me. For the law of the spirit of life. Everybody say spirit of life. Religion is don't do this, don't do that. If you do this, you know, we'll accept you. If you don't do it, we'll kick you out. Do's and don'ts, do's and don'ts. That's religion. Well, don't they have do's and don'ts in Christianity? Listen to me. Listen to me. Christianity is a relationship with God through Christ. I have and you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We don't do certain things because we have a relationship with God. I do not do certain things because I have a relationship with my wife. If you don't have no relationship with nobody, if you don't have no relationship with God, you're just going to do what you want to do. Are you listening? See, people can't understand, like, we die to the law. Romans uh, chapter 7, verse 4 tells us that. We won't turn there, but you know that. But we have the lawgiver living in us. See, once you develop that, and, we, and all of you have to a degree, all of us, but we're growing in that, that we have that relationship with, Bob, why don't you drink? I loved beer. When, when I first became a Christian, I, I, I drank. I drank for a year and a half after I became a Christian. But as I got into the Word of God and I developed that relationship with God and my relationship with my wife, because she did like for me to drink, and my dad was an alcoholic, and I put all those together, one thing and another, and then I was convicted by the Holy Spirit that there's millions of people that are becoming alcoholics because they drank the first beer. Hello, are you out there? See, if, it, if I said God's given us wisdom, spiritual wisdom, we, we begin to understand that, it, it, you know, uh, uh, 
I don't do this because that is something I don't want to support. And so I, I was com- convicted uh, in my heart and that it was uh, wrong because I'm, I'm supporting something that's bringing people into, millions of people into bondage. So I withdraw myself because of love. The love of God abides in my heart. And love began to control and take over. And I was willing to uh, think of the money I saved. My thousands and thousands of dollars. When I gave up cigarettes, thousands and thousands. Why, I believe it might be even into the millions. <laughs> and, the, and the Scotchman says, Oh, no, it's not that. <laughs> but I do get drunk. I have to confess that. Yeah, I've been drunk in the Holy Ghost quite a bit. And I tell you what, I wake up the next morning, I don't have no headache either. So, be ye not drunk with wine where is an excess, but ye be filled with the Holy Ghost. So we make these decisions in our life, and there is a tremendous reward if we make the right decisions. We study to uh, make ourselves approved unto God. We're not working for our salvation. Salvation is a gift Christ is my salvation. His life is in me. Look what it says. The spirit of life, the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus is in you. That life is in you. Therefore, it, that life is what sets us free from the law of sin and death. Life. life. It ain't rules. It's life. It's Christ's life in us. It is no more I that liveth, but it is Christ that liveth within me. You tap into his life. His life takes over. And you joy his life, and his life sets you free from the law of sin and death. Trying and failing, 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 trying and failing. Try and failing, try and failing, try and failing. You make a song out of it, try and failing. And you get tired. But see, you tap into the life. See, the world don't understand it. Christ in us is our only hope of glory. Christ in our hearts is our only hope of heaven. It's Christ, a person. His spirit lives in me. His life has set me free from not wanting to drink. His life has set me free from not wanting to smoke. His life has set me free from talking about the brethren in a negative way or the sisters. His life has set me free from all those negatives. That's just the way it works. And the lost person cannot understand it's do's and don'ts and do's and don'ts, fairly, and, and, and that's what the law of sin and death is. Trying and failing, trying and failing. Now, I want you to think about it a minute. I'm just going. <laughs> just let it run out. We were lost. And if we'd have died in that state, we would have spent eternity in a burning hell, separated from God. I want you to think for a moment. I want you to see for a moment salvation from the viewpoint of God the Father. Think from the viewpoint of God the Father. I was lost, undone, bound to hell. But God loved me. See, to understand love... Let's bring it down to the human level. Rachel, you got three children. Would you give your life for any one of them? And you do every day, really. You give your life every day. Why do you do that? You love them.
Children, it's simple. Get off your own. Just let God's love take over. God's love. God's love through Christ came down. Loved me so much. I want Bob back. The devil stole him. Adam messed up big time and it affected Bob. What can I do? God knows without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sin. So who could I send? Somebody, somebody, I got to have my justice satisfied. I just can't let it sweep it up under the rug. And Jesus said, Father, I go. I'll pay. I'll pay the price. I'll give my life. And Jesus came down here and gave his life. And I'm free. You're free. Because he loved you and gave his life for you. Not because of a bunch of rules and regulations. God bought us back. The Bible says Jesus brought us back to God the Father. Amen. That's why I like the, the prodigal son so beautiful. When the prodigal son's father saw him coming down the road, what a mess he was. He got up off that porch. I could see him rocking in the rocking chair. He looks down there. He sees his son coming. He gets up and he runs to his son and grabs him and kisses him on the neck and has a festival, a party. Then the oldest son, oh man, we have a lot of them in the church today. <laughs> Father, I've been this and I did this and you never killed an animal for me. Son, don't you understand everything I have is yours? You want to have a party? Find your hog, kill him, I'll come. <laughs> you know, when we first start out in Christianity, we have a lot of Pharisee in us. No fear. Not very fair. <laughs> but not down in nobody. But you see, that's part of the old Adam. But see, that died at Calvary. And now we can look to new life. See, the Bible says that God has given us his nature. His nature lives in us now. Amen. So we let his nature, we live by his nature now. I've had people curse me out. I've had people tell me to go to hell. I've had people do so many different things to me. But you know what? I'm free. Because the love of God will set you free. God will do that type of work. You're free. So many people that I, I deal with, and Susan me, over the years, they, all, they got something against somebody. My daddy did this. My mama did this. The teacher did this, the pastor did this, the elder did this. Yes, I know, we all done mighty, stupid, crazy things. But forgiveness is the answer. Let it go. Because if you don't, it'll take you down. Every time. We have to let the love of Christ control live within us. I remember... I lived on Middlecliff Avenue, and this neighbor next door had this dog. I was on night shift. The dog loved to bark in the daytime when I was sleeping. So I bought myself a tank. <laughs> now, you know, there's the feelings, huh? Come on, now, there's the feelings. See, the feelings are going to come. If I could actually get a hold of that dog and get my hands around his neck, he wouldn't bark no more. Now, how do you overcome something like that? Well, you put the pillar over your ears. That helps a little bit. But I had to overcome it, and I did overcome it. And after a while, it was like, when the dog didn't bark, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> God can shift things around. 
to where what you once couldn't stand, you love now. You couldn't once understand, you couldn't, you like some of the people that listen to this, can't stand themselves, but after God does the work in, I love myself. Now you can love others. Because see, you, you, you love your neighbor as you love yourself, and if you don't love yourself, you don't love your neighbor. So you learn to put that stuff together. But see, it's God that does the work. Everybody say, it's God, it's God. that does the work. So we put the word in us, get the word in our hearts, and we get vigorous, we get strong, we get free, and you live a total different life. Total different life. I, I have some grandchildren, they always seem to need some extra money. You ever find anybody like that? Oh, <laughs> talking to the right cloud. Yeah. You know, and I remember Susan saying, honey, now, don't, don't you get up that, that tight. What is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> and as you mentioned, one of my grand needs 300, 400, 500. <laughs> no! <laughs> but see, God does that work in you. Seriously, I'm serious. How much do they need? 300, 400, 500. Is that all? And just give it to them. And, and don't feel anything but just love. I'm telling you the truth. I ain't lying to you. Right now, I could give him every bit of my money. I'll be right now. But, <laughs> but a dollar wouldn't do him no good. <laughs> Seriously, when God does the work, you know it's God. It's God working in us. Everybody say, it's God. It's God. Working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. And when he does the work in you, it ain't nothing. You don't have to tell you, it's a, it's a pleasure. Is that all you want is 500? Seriously. Anybody in here like that now? I love that. You see that little boy raised his hand over there. But now, it's not the question of money, but I want them to learn to be responsible because when I'm going, when granddad's going, and if you ain't learned how to handle your money yet, because the other day I had one come by and they turned the electricity off. How much you need? $240, is that all? <laughs> Just give it to him. But I said, no, honey, it's very simple. It's not complicated. I know you don't have a job now, but you see, you go out and get the job, and you, yeah, but they don't pay but about $5 or $6 an hour, Grandpa. <laughs> I said, how much are you making now? <laughs> <laughs> Suck it in, baby. If it's five or four dollars, it's more than you're making right now. Get out there and get with it. But we're kind and gentle. And I see, I know that by heart, that <laughs> what I just said. I mean, I said it so many. But see, I'm believing and trusting that they will become. And we want this for our children. We want this for our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. How many of you know that so many grandparents are raising kids today? Raise your hands if you know that. Yeah. Many of us here have done it. We've raised two, three, four. I forget how many now. <laughs> I think some of them, just the neighbor's kids came by, you know. <laughs> they would all come by. <laughs> we have dinner and I look around. I say, my goodness, where did all these kids come from? Well, this is, this is Patsy's uh, friend, and, and, and then there's Tammy's friend, and there's... Tammy's friend, and there's Susan's friend, and there's my friend, and there's me. Why, the family's growing. But we love it. We've done that, and what we've shared the gospel with people. We learned, yeah, things really got with us, but we learned to give it to God, give it to God, and get freer and freer and freer. Because I'm going to tell you, how, what, what you're going to take, as far as this world's goodies are concerned, how much you're going to take? Zero. Nothing. And I've never seen a hearse Pulling a U-Haul car, uh, car <laughs> truck, you know. No, you go leave it all. Now we have to have wisdom, and I understand that. But is it worth just losing your health, just pulling your hair out? You, you look at me, you don't want to be like me. <laughs> 
Christ has come to set us free from ourselves. That's right. I'm free tonight because I'm free from myself. How many of you understand that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're free. But stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. That's our part. Casting all my cares upon Jesus. And the peace of God. Oh, I love the peace of God. That passes all human understanding. Shall keep your heart and mind at rest as you trust the Lord. We know what this is. We know what it is. Raising children. Raising the neighbor's children. Grandchildren. Great-grandchildren. The body of Christ. We understand all of the anxieties and, and, and the tensions and years ago I went to the hospital I thought I had a heart attack and the doctor said just hypertension you just worried about everything Mr. Tilton I come home after a week I knew what I had to do I had to trust Jesus let his life begin to flow and trust him. Let his life minister to me. Man, I'd get, I mean, my ears would be as red as red could be. Tension. I'd minister to other people and be exhausted myself. But I had to learn to trust in Jesus. Let him be Lord. Let his life provide what I need to overcome the world of flesh and the devil. And I know some of you are there, but we all need to be there more so because there is so much out there in this world. All the news is bad, pouring into our little psychics. And we feel like, what's the use? Just give up. Well, don't give up. God is in control. He's Lord. He's Lord of my life. I nailed that down many, many, many years ago. That's why I'm 83 years old and standing today, and I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm not all tensed up. You got problems. I love you, and I'll pray for you, and I'll share the word. But I ain't going to pick up your anxiety and your tension no more because it don't pay. Because when I come from the hospital, I knew what I had to do. I had to get this word in me, let his life flow in me. Believe the Holy Spirit's working in me and deliver me from everything that this flesh can generate. And now I'm a free man because I stay in contact and I am conscious of the Holy Spirit living in me. I fear no man. I can go into, uh, we go, Susan B goes into Walmart. We hand out our tracks. I mean, right there. I mean, we just come right out. Hey, have you had your vitamin pills today yet, son? Well, listen, I got some here for you. You, you take them and I tell you, you're going to be okay after all. <laughs> Young lady, have you had your vitamin pills? Yet? Well, here you go. You just take them vitamin pills. They'll fix you right up. How, that, I'd love to be able to have about a half an hour to explain all of that, but they got that. There they got it right there. Right. They got it right there. And they go home, nobody looking, get in the bathroom. <laughs> ah, goodness. And they see the whole message. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, not me. I can't save nobody. I just sow the word, water the word, and God gives the increase. So you come to that in your life. Turn your loved ones loose. Turn everybody loose. Your aunt, Aunt Molly, Aunt Josephine, Aunt Nellie, Aunt whatever, and Uncle John, your kids, your grandkids. Turn everybody loose. Everybody put, stand to your feet right now. All right? We're going to worry about a thing. What are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know, but God will direct me and guide me. Everybody put it out on your hand. Come on. That person you've been thinking about and you've been chewing up nails and want to spit at them and kill them and all that. Just give it all to God. Come on. All the tension. Are you ready? One, two.
to, what is the Bible? Cast all your care upon Willie. Oh, oh cast all your cares upon Mike. Whoop. <laughs> I tell you what, Rachel don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> cast all your... <laughs> Oh, their precious Linda. We'll just give it all to her. No, my goodness. We'll give Debbie all of them. There's Missy back there. Here you go. I'll give you all. No. Cast all your cares upon Jesus. Everybody say, cast all your cares upon Jesus. Right now, one, two, three. Go. Woo. Hallelujah. And don't pick them up again. You're free. Let it go. Get it out of your brain. Let it go. Now, you may be seated. God, you got two minutes I can hold you back. Rachel, would you mind coming up here for a moment? I know you don't have any problems. But do you remember when you were a little girl about eight years old? Slightly. Was you free? Yes, sir. I'm free. How, how did you, I mean, was you really free back then? Back then, definitely free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. That was easy. <laughs> I want you to see yourself just like that. Okay. okay. And, and show us how you would express yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be good, isn't it? I don't think I can move like that. <laughs> you, do, you do flips, flips, <laughs> flops. But yeah. you, you know, it, but I remember when I, we, yeah, when I was eight years old, yeah. Be afraid, let's go play ball. We go out and play ball. Throw the ball up there. Just free. Yeah, you go look at she's getting freer right now. All right, let me pray for you. Father, I free her in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. I know the load. My goodness, but she's free. She sees herself free. Everything. Father, she's free. Hallelujah. Let the joy of the Lord strengthen her right now. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell you what. Woo, glory to God. That, doesn't she inspire you, huh? Doesn't she? She inspires me, I tell you. Come up here. You got two more minutes. I know you work hard all day. But, you, but you're on a crew with everybody just, they're just, so, they're just so wonderful, aren't they? Huh? I love them. You love them, okay. <laughs> Let's see your hands. Uh, all right, take your hands off their throat now. Come on. <laughs> no, 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 Limmer no, up. No, that's cool. You know, you, you bless me. You bless me. I, I know what you're going through. Yes, sir. I've been there. But I had to learn, and you're learning. Mm -hmm. You're learning. Yes, sir. When they act ugly, you just smile and, and compassion. His compassion will come out. That's right. His love will come out. That's right. Because personally, tell me how you feel. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. But, but seriously, I mean, there's times when you'd like to give him oh, a cup. Sure. Huh? Huh? Sure. Karate yeah. chop. Oh, yeah, yeah. How about this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And one of these. Yeah, yeah. Give him an elbow. See what I've been working on? Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> That's feelings. But that's, when, that's a call for prayer. God, yeah. personally, I like to send every one of them to the moon. But, the, but Brother Bob's got the moon populated pretty good now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm going to, I ask you to love them through me. That's right. Because yes, you ain't going to be able to do it. That's right. Yes, sir. That life, that we said like there, spirit of life yes. has set you free from that law of sin which you want to send them to the moon. There was a man at the base at work. He gave me a hard time all the time. And I wrestled with this thing, you know. And seriously, I could have sent him. I, well, I didn't, the moon was too close. I mean, you know, there must got to be another planet further out there. <laughs> I said, Lord, how do I handle this? I honestly want to just kill him. That's what I felt like. Yeah. And God says, very simple. Love him. But Lord, I don't have that love in my heart. I know you don't. Mm. But I'm in your heart. Yes, Let me love him. So you get that in your mind. I'm going to love them. Mm -hmm. Not what they do, but I'm going to love them. Right. And say, God, work it in me. Now you're, your faith is in the Holy Spirit to work 
in your heart, which you can't do, but he works it in your heart, and then the natural, it just flows out. You just love the people. Give you a hard time, you just love them. I was a foreigner at the air base, and here's what you got. The colonel, high-ranking people, demanding. This is a product. This thing's got to be done in four hours. So I got a couple men over here. And they, and they look at me like, okay? I mean, the attitude itself, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> but I had to pick one of them way through the attitude of, of their faces. See, I can read faces. I can tell people's attitude just by looking at their, I'm so good at it, you know, because I've had a lot of experience, see. And, and, and all their faces are like, <laughs> which none of them want to do that. It's hot priority. The, now notice the pressure on me, breathing, the colonel. You ever had a colonel breathing down on you? You know what a colonel in the Air Force would do? I mean, but anyway, that was hot, big rank stuff, see. I'm cool. I'm like Charles Sunday, cool cat. So I look at my people I got and all their faces. I know their skills. And I say, Bowles, that's one of my men. Bowles, I want you to take care of this job. Here's the situation. The airplane's got to fly at a certain time. We've got to get this piece finished, repair it, and get it back on the aircraft. Okay. So he takes it over on his workbench and he starts working on it. But see, that's pressure. Pressure. Pressure, pressure, and you have to learn to live under pressure. But then on the other hand, pearls, how many of you know that pearls are formed by pressure? Pressure. Diamonds are formed by pressure. But you have to learn to give it to God, even though the pressure's on you, you release it to God. It, that's a learning process. And you learn under strain and pressure to be cool and relax in it. And you survive. You survive. But I had to learn it. And I had to learn it the hard way because I ended up in the hospital. And I thought I had a heart attack. There was anxiety. And that's the most horrible uh, feeling, experience you can experience. You feel like you're going to die. In fact, after a while, you hope you would. <laughs> yeah. But see, I learned and I realized that I have got to learn to abide in him and abide in his word and let him carry the pressure. And I'm just an instrument in the hands of God. You learn that. And now you can enjoy life. I love you, brother. Let me pray for you. Take your hat off right there. Father, I ask right now that you're strengthening him right now. Lord, you live big in this man, and I thank you for him right now. I release him from all the pressure and the tardiness of the day. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is quickening your mortal body right now. Mm. And you're doing a work in this man that's so precious. Mm. And we thank you for his life. In Jesus' name.